Hey everybody, Jesse here. I uh, just want to share a story today about uh, the most clear, unequivocal miracle that I've ever witnessed in my life. Um, it happened in Hawaii when I was going to BYU, Hawaii. And um, it was when, when me and three of my friends went on a hike up the Haula Falls Trail. Um, we, it's like there's dozens of waterfalls up this trail. You, you walk up the stream and you get to the first waterfall and it's probably like 15, 20 feet high. And there's ropes down all these waterfalls and you climb up the rope and you keep going up the stream and you, and you progressively go up this creek bed as you go up into the mountains. And uh, my friends and I did this one day and we got up to the seventh waterfall, which is the highest of the ones we did. We probably did a dozen. Um, and so the seventh one is about 70 feet high. And I'm here in Portland where I work and I work at this building right here. And oddly enough, I work on the seventh floor, which is this one right here. And that's about 70 feet up. And so keep that in mind for perspective um, when I share this. And so when we went up the waterfall, um, we got to the top and two of the guys that were, I was with were tired. And so they decided to wait uh, while me and the other guy went up a few more waterfalls. And then we came back down and then I went down first, uh, descending the seventh fall and got to the bottom and uh, the bottom is like jagged rocks, you know, water in between. There's no significant pool. You know, it's probably a foot deep of water in between all the rocks. And, um, and so my friend Sean started to come down next and I took a picture of him right as he was starting to put his weight on the rope and come down the waterfall. And uh, and no sooner than I took that picture, he fell. And it was like a, a lava tube. Uh, so the first 20 feet or so are vertical. And then, and then it kind of angles just a little bit and it's kind of like uh, a water slide, but rocks and it's all mossy, but it's still like almost vertical. And he slipped and fell and uh, As he fell, he came zooming down the waterfall. And when he got to the vertical part, it was uh, it was almost as though his like feet came out from under him. And uh, and and he turned to where he, he fell flat on his back in the in the water. And it, there was like this space in the water that was like perfectly shaped. To his body and um, I come running up to him and I'm, I, I thought he was dead uh, and I said Sean you alright and he looks up at me with his witty personality and says what do you think I just fell off a waterfall and I had like the biggest relief ever and that by itself was a miracle that he survived that let alone the fact that he hiked out and came away with from the thing with only some scratches and minor bruises and it was just mind-blowing to me to watch that it was almost as though an angel had like scooped up his legs and set him down in the water um and so uh i share this because um Miracles are very, very important. And it, this has been on my mind a lot lately because of um, a scripture in John. And uh, before I get to that one, I want to share Christ's first miracle, which is uh, also in John. I'll, I'll use John as the, the reference point. And so it's John chapter 2. 
and it says, um, this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. That's verse 11. So the purpose of these miracles are that man might believe in Christ. And so I share this one because it's fascinating to me that um, that Christ would make wine out of water and it wasn't for the sacrament. And the other fascinating thing is that he made it, you know, at the behest of his mother. And, you know, she asked him, hey, can you make some wine over here? We need some more beverage. And, and he was like, oh, it's not my time yet. But he did it. He did it anyway. And so it, it kind of illustrates to me that, uh, you know, his will is flexible and he can change his mind and he can do things that you might not otherwise expect him to do if you just ask. And so going to the next miracle, this is also very fascinating. It's the, the miracle where he raises Lazarus from the dead. He says, uh, uh, this is, this is, so Martha and Mary had, uh, you know, their brother Lazarus was sick and they called on Jesus to come help, help them with it. And he, uh, he says, you know, it's all right. I'm going to go preach in Judea. He tells his, dis his disciples, we're going to go to Judea and preach. And the disciples don't say, hey, you know, what about Lazarus? They say, you probably shouldn't go there because they'll probably want to kill you. He says, no, we're going anyway. So he goes and preaches for a few days. Comes back, and at this point, Lazarus has been dead for four days. And so Martha's, you know, they're still weeping and wailing. And, and this is the, the, the chapter that has the famous verse where it says Jesus wept. Which is fascinating because he knew what the outcome of this situation was. But he... He had this tremendous empathy for his friends and loved ones that were mourning over Lazarus's loss, and um, and so Martha said unto him, "I know that he should." Or Jesus says unto her, "Thy brother shall rise again." And Martha says unto him, "I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection, the last day." And Jesus says to her, "I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live." And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? And um, so she says, Yea, Lord. And so they go over to the tomb. And they, and Jesus tells them to roll the stone away. And then, uh, this is really, really fascinating. He says in verse 41 of chapter 11. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And this is before he tells Lazarus to come out of the grave. He, first this illustrates two important things. One, he, having this tremendous power, still checks in with the Father to make sure that that's his will. And upon receiving the, the father's permission, he commands Lazarus to, to come forth. And so Lazarus comes out of the grave. Oh, sorry. The other thing I was gonna say about there is that he, he thanked the father before he even performed the miracle. So he preemptively showed gratitude, which, which is important on its face that, you know, gratitude needs to be um, practiced in all our doings and if you practice it before you receive the blessing it's kind of an exercise of faith because you'll know when you pray um, the no's are pretty quick they come pretty distinctly so if you don't receive a no why not say thank you before you actually receive the blessing and um, And this is what, this is the next verse, verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. This is Christ talking. Uh, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. 
That's why he did this miracle. That the people that were standing by might believe, and I would also argue the people that are reading about it, like us today, that we might believe that the Father sent Christ. And, um, and so I share these two miracles and the one that I saw because we need to look for these miracles in life. And, uh, and one, one miracle that you might not be aware of, it's, I guess a, a scientific miracle of sorts, is that concrete and steel expand and contract at the same rate. They have like, I don't know what the scientific term for it is, thermal expansion or something like that, but um, this allows us to put rebar in buildings and bridges and make all these structures like this bridge that I'm about to go under. Um, you know, you can make these pillars here so that when there's an earthquake, they don't just crack and tumble and everything comes crashing down. And so, you know, in all these bridges and buildings, you know, there's made uh, this mix of concrete and steel. And, um, and if they didn't have that same expansion property, you couldn't use them together because they would break apart as, as the temperature heated and cooled. And so, uh, yeah, this is lovely Portland. Um, you would, you couldn't imagine what our world would look like. It'd probably look more like, you know, all these tents and stuff if we didn't have uh, the ability to make buildings and and bridges and runways, um, all these structures. And so maybe maybe it'd be a good idea to to give thanks for that. And so um, just wanted to wrap this up and leave you my testimony that um, someday. I think we'll be able to work more miracles more uh, overtly as the adversaries granted power, so will the Lord's righteous. But in the meantime, um, be looking for the miracles in your life that uh, bless you and bless others. And I leave you these thoughts in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.